had experienced this world of exercise and I couldn't understand why this wasn't taught at like every elementary school in the world. Because if you get taught this when you're seven and you use these tools, you'll have the tools to keep yourself it, it tuned up with audience to try to share this with the world. So I think everyone should do some Eldoa weekly. I think everybody should have a higher level of awareness of how their body works and how they can keep it working well through through the years. Alive. All right, I didn't see myself as becoming an osteopath, but I had experienced this world of exercise and I couldn't understand why this wasn't taught at like every elementary school in the world. Because if you get taught this when you're seven and you use these tools, mm -hmm. you'll have the tools to keep yourself it, it tuned up. Um, and my goal is not to run a successful solo practitioner business though you know like i need that for my life to work my real goal and my passion with taking this on is to try to bring this to the big audience to try to share this with the world so i think everyone should do some eldoa weekly I think everybody should have a higher level of awareness of how their body works and how they can keep it working well through through the years. And Guy used to say, you are the best therapist. Not me, you. But right now you have no tools. So the, the, the Eldoa and the exercises, those are the tools. For everybody, they should have a few. They should be using a few tools all of the time. And then the more athletic you are or the more damaged you are, the more tools that you should spend time teaching yourself and practicing. And it's like everything else. Like these tools don't make a lot of sense when you see them, but the more you use them, they, they work on a lot of different systems all at once. And your body works better when, when you make them part of a, a weekly or daily practice. So, so who should who who should come see you? Who's your ideal client? Should everyone take out the time? Because in my opinion, I've been telling everyone about you because I think if you're an athlete or whoever you are, I'm telling everybody left and right. I'm like, listen, you know, go see what this is. Go, you know, go treat yourself. So yeah. So again, so who's your ideal? Um, patient and and in the second part if you can answer why is it still not so widely accepted in in uh in the west right all right so let me start with the second part so the the godfather of this program you know obviously there are origins of this that go thousands of years back right like there are yoginis from five thousand years ago and you see their the position that they're teaching you and it's like okay like clearly the origin is there mm -hmm. for th the particular osteopathic um, modality that I've studied. The, the godfather is that Andrew Taylor still that I told you about. Mm -hmm. And he was an American MD who became a, a, the sort of first American DO of this ilk. And then he acquired uh, two principal disciples a guy named William Sutherland, who was one generation younger, and an, a man named John Martin Little John, who was the same as uh, Sutherland, same generation as Sutherland. And those two men, um, you know, they lived sort of into, Sutherland died in 1954 and Little John died in 47. So they, they had made it, you know, sort of to that first, uh, second world war time 
Um, the, the osteopath was considered equal to the MD for World War I and World War II. And the, the DO and the MD went off to war together. Cool. What happened in America was when the DO came back from World War II, the American Medical Association reorganized the DO in concert with the MD. So in, in that moment, the Sutherland philosophy was lost and it became regulated by the AMA. So we have DOs in America, but they're, um, they're regulated by the AMA and they're, they're really, they're really used as generalists, right? So if you look at the presidential medical team, it, it's something like seven doctors, six of them are MDs and one is a DO mm -hmm. and the DO is in charge. Wow. So the DO philosophically thinks more about how the systems integrate and then based on, you know, what specifically should be treated, the MD does the specific surgery or the specific pharmacological intervention. Um, so the way this lived on, the way Andrew Taylor Still's philosophy lived on was little John went back to Europe and, and started the largest osteopathic school in the world, the, the London School of Osteopathic Medicine. And from there, it really proliferated across Europe. Yeah. And, and then the, the next osteopath in line is the man who created the system that I've learned is Guy Voyer. He was from Marseille in France, and um, but certainly the, the European. And then why it's so much... So the, there's a couple, there's a couple things to understand why it's different in the U S versus Europe. So that what we've just talked about is one is the AMA is in charge of the DO and the DO is much like an MD in the U S mm -hmm. number two is in Europe, there really are three branches of medicine. And in the U S there are two, um, in the U S you have the knife, the surgery, and you have the pill a pharmacological intervention. And then in Europe, you have these clinics in the Alps where and, and elsewhere where you go, they're staffed by doctors, but there are no pharmacological interventions and there are no surgeries. Mm. So it's the water. You're being treated with water and bone broth and asparagus soup basically is mm. what Finger prescribes. And in that ecosystem, you have the osteopath, you have the homeopath, you have the naturopath, uh, etc. Prove to me that you are alive. So that's that's branch two of the answer, and then the third part is the way the licensing in the U.S. is. So this is, you know, part of. The, the, there there are really only three licenses to touch in the U.S. Uh, you have the. Um, massage therapy license, you have the chiropractic license, and then you have the doctor of physical therapy, the McKinsey method license. And in Europe, um, there are really more, it's more of an open market for touch. I believe there are 10 licenses to touch mm -hmm. in different parts of Europe. So you have a seniopath and a kineopath and a physio and an osteopath and so there was just more room for innovation in, in Europe. And this particular branch of osteopathic medicine that I've studied is, a, is an innovation in the general osteopathic technique. So, so Guy Voyer, the man that I went to school with and studied from and who healed me, he created his own system of techniques. They were based on the original techniques, but he expanded on them. And then he created these, some of the exercises he created and some of the exercises he really like repurposed from ancient yoga positions, or he discovered it and it happened to also be a ancient yoga type of position. So um, those, those are kind of the, the three things to understand to answer that question.
cool. Yeah, thank you so much, man. And I see me, I'm a super huge critic of um, American medical system because I think, like you just kind of mentioned, that it's a lot of bureaucracy and it's all these industries that are, you know, controlling a lot of the field and everything. So I appreciate you. Thank you so much for for being honest with us. And, and, you know, it was important for us to hear what you said. And again, thank you for uh, considering yourself a healer. Thank you so much for being here. I have one last question. You're an okay. incredible, you're an incredible human being. You're a super cool guy. You're a friend of the show. Please come back anytime because I can pick your brain forever. Okay. Um, uh, so my last question is the tradition that we have on this show <laughs> and I'm going to take a left turn. Okay. Um, what is your meaning uh, for life for you personally? What is the meaning for life for Dr. John Garrett? Oh, wow. Well, well, I'm, I'm very, I have a three and a half year old son. And I'm very interested. Congratulations. In, thank you. Thank you. You know, my son, my son is part of my meaning for sure. And I want to, you know, prepare him to fend for himself in this world. And I'm interested in leading by example. And I think integrity, like my integrity and being my word, those are things that are, are guiding forces for me when I'm on the side of good. Um, and then like as a bigger meaning, I, I would like to, you know, bring this knowledge to a big audience. I would like the awareness of how the body works and what you can do about it to be shared with all. Um, and um, I, I also think that understanding what life is, is important for us in this age. You know, we're, we have a very human centric focus on life and, you know, a AI is challenging our, kind of understanding of of what life is and Guy would talk to us a bit about this and you know to try to get that really it's the the adaptation adaptation is a big part of what life is and so you know to to remind yourself of that and, and not get comfortable and stagnant but to always be adapting and uh, trying to trying to grow and uh, try to invert the thing you're certain of, like, okay, it seems true, but if I invert it, is it still true? Like for me, that's, that's what gives me meaning. And that's what the meaning of life is. That's beautiful. Um, so, uh, we're going to wrap up. So all the jokes aside, one of the main reasons why I wanted to have you on is because you are on the side of the good and i felt that in you from the first moment i met you is because i felt that you are truly here to you know help people and maybe give people tools and i'm with you on the same side i think that this information and you know your uh, practice and your knowledge should be more widespread. And this channel is all about bringing, you know, and this podcast is all about bringing people the necessary information for the necessary tools, be it physical or spiritual or whatever it is. We're all about that. So I cannot thank you enough for being here. I know your time is super precious. You are always busy. You're an incredible human being. You're an amazing healer. I'm not even going to call you doctor anymore. You're a healer. Um, so uh, make sure to send me, email me uh, all your contacts so I can plug it into the description of the video. That way people get in, can get in touch with you. Right. Um, so uh, take us out of here. What is what is the what is your last thought you would like to share with everyone that's going to see this? And, and then, you know, we're going to wrap it up. Well, you were you were saying, like, who should come and see me? And I never quite got to answering that. And. You know, like the, the answer is if you heard this and you're curious about it and you're interested in it, then you're exactly the right person to come and see me. The, the people who have success in my system are, are interested and open to trying new things. And, you know, the last piece is, will you do the exercise? So if that sounds like you, then, you know, definitely schedule an appointment. I can make this work at 
all different um, budgets. Um, you know, like my, my hourly rate is expensive, but if you do the exercises, you don't have to see me very often. And um, I think to learn about your body and feel like you have control over how how life goes for you, at least in the physical world, I, I think that's really liberating and something I'm excited to be a part of. So that's my uh, that's my my outro. Yeah, listen, as far as budget, man, um, first of all, what you do is priceless, right? It, it truly is. And your health is truly prices, priceless. Um, so if we can, you know, go and spend like $100 at a nice restaurant, man, we can certainly take that $100 and put it towards our health and, and feel better, man. So, uh, you know, I'm on that side. Um, uh, doctor, thank you. So I, I can't even say doctor anymore. I got to say healer, man. Um, yeah, John, thank you so much for being here. Um, God bless you. And uh, you're an amazing person. Please come back because there's still, still so much to talk about. And um, I'll see you on the rebound. Thank you so much. I wish you all the best. Thank you for being here. Thank yep. you. And a wrap up.